Hi there, I am going to talk about my Ender 3 preferred mods, what I did to the machine, and how you can improve your machine's performance. Now, before I get into that, a side note, you don't have to mod your machine. The Ender 3 prints amazingly right out of the box. Take your time in building it, get it set up right, tram the machine, get all the joints 90 degrees, and you're gonna have a wonderful printer. If you do wanna take it to that, to that next level, print higher temperature filaments or more difficult filaments, you want faster performance, uh, and you wanna learn just how the machine is made, then modding is a great hobby. Uh, you learn how to adjust your machine, how to improve it, how it's made and how it performs. So it's really nice to get into modding of your machine. Uh, one note I would say is do one mod at a time. If, uh, if you're trying to improve your extruder, do the mod to your extruder, stop, print, check if that improved it or it degraded the machine. When you do multiple mods at the same time and then your printer goes wrong, you don't know what the heck you did and it's, it's frustrating. So take it one at a time. But let's start by looking at my machine. Um, some of the mods I've printed, some I've purchased, some I made, and I'll just go through them one at a time. So the first thing I want to talk about is the extruder back here. This is the CME CNC Easy R extruder. I, uh, I put that on all of my machines. It's a great price. It's around $35, uh, much less than a Bontech. It constrains the filament path really well. So you're able to print flexibles. You're able to print any filament. It's also really simple to squeeze and move the filament in and out and load the filament, take it out. It's a great quality extruder and it doesn't require you to flash the firmware or change your stepper motors. You just put it on your machine, quick, uh, quick upgrade. Uh, on top of that, you'll see my own uh, extruder knob. I designed this to have only three verticals so that you can actually see down into your gear. This is nice because you can see when the extruder is moving forward or back, retracting or extruding. It's also possible to hand crank your, your extruder to load and it just makes things a lot easier. Next thing I want to talk about is the bed springs. Uh, the Ender 3 comes with these cheap springs. When you get these flat sectioned, usually yellow springs, they're a lot more stiff and have a lot better performance. And what, what that's going to do for you is it's going to make your bed less wobbly and especially when it's accelerating and moving around real quickly, you're gonna have less vibration and your prints are gonna have less salmon skin. Uh, it also will retain your bed level a lot longer. Make sure though that you crank those down to halfway compression, home your machine, and if you have a gap between your nozzle and the print bed, change your Z limit switch height because you want the home to touch nozzle to print bed surface when the springs are half compressed. That way when you do go ahead and level, you've got the machine pretty well compressed and, and held down. I also insulate my bed. I'm going to tip this up so you can see it. I insulate the beds underneath. You can see the foil and foam. I'll list uh, the details of that in the link uh, on the description here. I insulate the bed because it'll let it heat up faster and you will get uh, more even heating across the whole build surface. It's a quick upgrade and it's, uh, it's very, very practical. I do it on all my machines. The next thing I want to talk about is the LED light bar. It's on. Let me shut it off. So this is your ender normally. And then when I turn it on, it lights up your whole print area because it's mounted to the back of the X gantry. A uh, very simple print. I use a LED light strip. You buy a roll of it for like $10 and you can use it for everything you want. It's very simple. For the Ender 3 Pro, remember it's a 24 volt uh, PSU, so you have to buy 24 volt electronic components. For the Ender 3 regular, it's a 12 volt. You can use this with a, a light switch that I've designed the housing for that'll screw onto your extrusions, or you could use it with this whole front piece that I've designed. This has the housing for the light switch. It has a converter for the SD micro to full-size SD card. 
and it even has a handy place to hold your excess SD cards while they're waiting to print. Easy print, easy to install. My wiring diagrams are in the Thingiverse files. You can find those there. Another thing that I love is this fan duct uh, design. I think it's very, very sensible. I've left the Thingiverse files there. It uses a 5015 blower. I have the links there. Once again, 24 volt for the Ender 3 Pro and 12 for the Ender 3 Normal. Um, this is going to cool your part as it's printing incredibly. It'll reduce your stringing, it'll improve your bridging, it does a lot of stuff for you. Um, I just leave my regular uh, hot end fan right on there exposed. You can print a grill if you like. I tend to not like the grills because they do reduce airflow, but you've got to be careful you don't get any tweezers or anything in there. Also, while you're at it, if you are adjusting your hot end, I recommend putting JST connectors on all the electrical connections and the XT30 on the heater cartridge connection since that's a high amp connection. These connectors make it so much easier when you're doing maintenance, when you're taking your hot end apart, when you're changing out parts. You just pull them apart, pull your pieces down and put them back on. No more finicking with wires and leads. Uh, just a, a good practice. I did use Capricorn tubing on my machine. Um, I do this because I use a pass-through PTFE tube down to the nozzle. I like that better than the all-metal in most cases because you, you have less jams. Um, you do every so often have to take it out and trim off the end if it gets gummied up, but I, I think it's a great investment. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Hopefully, oh, sorry. <laughs> One other very big thing, the Wham Bam Flexible Build System. This is my own product development. Uh, we've gone into production and created a company for this. I think this is one of your, your best upgrades, um, coming from myself, of course. What this is, is it's a flexible spring steel sheet, our flexi plate, covered with a proprietary polymer, we call PEX, that outperforms even PEI and temperature resistance. Parts stick to it like crazy. It's held to your machine with a flexible magnetic bed. This flexible magnet we developed to resist 130 degrees Celsius, Celsius constant print temp. We've actually print, printed and tested at 170 degrees for nine days with no degradation of performance or magnetism. Um, this system just lets you get great, great bed adhesion and lets you pop off your parts with ease, no more prying, no more spatulas, and it lets you get right back into printing immediately. You just wipe it with alcohol, put it back on the machine, hit print, and you're back and good to go. No more prying, no more glues, no more tapes, no more slurries. Um, to me, this is one of the best improvements you can make. Sorry if I'm a little biased about it, but it's, a, it's an amazing kit. And that's it. That's my Ender 3 mods. I hope you enjoy and uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have other mods that you prefer or advise. Always looking for uh, interesting new improvements to add to my machines. Thank you.